Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Peter Barber here, primarily a professional opera singer, host of the podcast Vocal Arts, and of course a member of the bass gang, of which the Bobby Bass featured in this video is also a part of, which I'm sure many of you watching this already know. Today we're going to be checking out the Song of Durin. This is uh, posted by Colin McGinnis, uh, another friend of mine who I'm still elbowing to come on my show and talk to me, but he is like trying to grab a hold of wet soap to nail down a time with that guy. Uh, and Jonathan Young is featured, who has also been on the podcast and the show Vocal Arts already and have done a collaboration with him as well with the Bass Gang. I'll leave a link to... I'll put the episode for the podcast here, and I'll, at some point in a few seconds, also put his uh, the Bass Gang cover of Centuries that features Jonathan Young. So I'm intimately familiar with these guys. I've only done one analysis video for column and that hasn't even come out yet aside from his part in misty mountains i think that was the only the, for, for the wellerman which i also had the honor of being a part of uh, guys this is a reaction and analysis so i will be pausing to talk primarily about vocal technique by these bassy boys these low bass singers um please do like subscribe comment and join my patreon if i'm adding value to your listening experience without further ado let's check out song of durin We're down in E minor. E, G, B. And um, Colin plays a ton of instruments. You know, he's actually, not a lot of people know this because he's gotten so well known as a singer, but he's primarily a composer, still composes music full time for <clears throat> video games and uh, all sorts of stuff. And he's an amazing composer. Um, and the voice he started kind of messing around with during the pandemic and found out obviously he's very gifted that way as well. But he's he plays all kinds of instruments. Like this one here. I don't even know what uh, what instrument this is. Some kind of Norse string instrument, most likely. It's too hot in here. I have to turn the AC on. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the sound. So, so so nice already down to a D2 a lot of just ums right now right we're kind of we're kind of bathing the sound in warm air with those nice semi occluded vocal track positions the ums heavily multi tracked right we're not getting we're not getting Bobby or Jonathan yeah this is a a multi tracked version of column singing with column playing instruments in the background as well dude is wicked talented very cool light setup as well. Got this kind of dark, eerie, like Darth Maul kind of look <laughs> going on here. So many great bass songs are in E minor, by the way. The world was young. The mountains green No stain Yet some The moon was seen no. Colin Goodman is that, that freaky bass Where it's just so darkened It sounds like a totally different voice But I'll be the first to say When he first came on the scene A few years ago singing the sea shanties I thought it was bullshit I really did I did not believe that that vocal color was coming out and that depth was coming out of the same person that could sing the high stuff. I was like, bullshit. This sounds like someone just tuned it down ungracefully. Dude can do that shit. Dude's voice really sounds like that. It's crazy. It's absolutely, it's absolutely bonkers. Um, I think he gets down to what, a B there? Down to a B1 in his, the, can only be the signature column fucking freaky chest voice. No song, the moon was seen. No aside, keeping a very breathy tone, aside from when he gets that, into that bass register where generally he'll compress and you know really bring out the power that he can access down there, really tight vocal full closure. The rest of it's very soft-spoken, breathy, warm, intimate, you know, storytelling. 
in a small space. Seems like right when he gets below the E is when he starts. It's like the E's are relaxed, and then as soon as he gets below the E, he starts recruiting that ex the extra musculature needed for him to produce those notes at those at that power. And it seems like it's a pretty clear. It almost sounds easier for him on like the low B than it does on the D because. That a D is probably know where he could kind of sing it either way, whereas when he gets down to the B, he probably needs that extra recruitment. Uh, that can that's like a kind of a weird low bass uh, transitionary point if you are kind of navigating techniques down there. And walk and walk alone. Alone. I think that was some kind of uh, false fold growl happening there yeah. something like that he ended up in a growl he named the nameless hills and he there's some low bass in the background I think nameless hills and Maybe a C. Again, when he sings it, it sounds lower because it's so dark. He named the nameless hills and tells. The nameless hills and tells. Mm. I think it is a C in the background. As he drank from yet untasted wells. He still. So you can tell when he starts this phrase, because Colin, when he sings, it really, it sounds like one voice is singing the low bass stuff, a different voice is singing the middle stuff, and then a different voice is singing the high stuff. And you can tell as he went from one phrase where it was a little bit lower to the next phrase, he had already adjusted the space in his vocal cavity he had already adjusted his laryngeal position to accommodate and prepare for ascending higher in the range so he sings these parts of his range very differently and you can he actually you could you could read that in the prep at the very start of that phrase and what was different between one phrase to the next he drank from yet untasted wells here he still he well, the first one was a little bit lower, like dark and well, he and the larynx came up a little bit and it got a little lighter. And that's preparing him to ascend higher in his vocal range without carrying too much weight up. At this moment, Colm can carry a lot of weight up and get that awesome high chest belt stuff going on. He stared wells. He stoops and looks in mirror me. And so a crown of stars appear. I love he's got a few little riffs in here, just like two, three or four note riffs, but just add a little embellishment to the melody. He stoops and looks in mirror me. Mirror me, mirror. Just a little, just a little turn. He still and looks in mirror another one up here and saw a crown saw a crown and saw a crown of stars appear as gems upon the silver thread you hear all you hear that that you can you can make it a much less dramatic change going from register to register, but Colum Colum telegraphs it. He 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 lets you know that he's about to be either descending or going up. Gems upon the Difference. As gems more space. Upon the silver thread. That he gets way down here for the 
the bass stuff. Layers lower, lower, layers lower, it's layers lower. And then he gets all the way, yeah, down to that low C, and it's just a, the fully expanded throat, right? On the silver thread above the shadows of his head. His head. See, I mean, I, I, I have to do a similar thing. I also have to compress to get down to, like, uh, uh, down, like, B. B is generally, like, you know, during the day... I can push down to about a B below low C. Uh, it's definitely not where I would want to be spending much time, but like if I needed it for a piece, I could I could probably do it for sure a low C. Um, I would say comes probably similar uh, in that way. The shadows of his head. There's just like so much space in in his in his pharynx, and here we get Jay Young. Absolutely, like I think one of the most talented vocalists in the biz. Just uh, I, I can't wait to hear what he does on this song. Dozer of his head. The world was fair, the mountains tall in elder days before the fall. Damn, dude, Jonathan's young has so much gravity and and because he, he's been doing this forever we as again go check out the interview with him you get to hear about his whole development as a musician and singer and who what has made him jonathan young the well-oiled music machine who just pumps out amazing covers every few days basically man his voice very much a natural low bass <clears throat> probably lower than i am probably closer to like bobby Really, who has trained his upper range like crazy to be able to do the high, gritty rock belting stuff. I mean, the talent is off the charts. And there's just so much weight and power, but it's also so natural when he's singing there. Um, I don't know if I've heard him sing this low in chest voice. I always knew he could. I knew he would always have low C's and B's for sure, just based on his speaking voice. But usually he uses like a growl technique or something when singing the really low bass stuff. So this is very cool to hear him sing down there. Um, just using pure fucking Jonathan Young chest. The world was fair, the mountains tall in elder days before the fall of mighty kings in Bobby, Bobby also has one of my favorite bass voices. It's just, it's so different from Jonathan's. Jonathan's has so much <clears throat> edge and cut to it, all, of course, informed by his rock and metal singing. Bobby, like, Bobby is working on that stuff as well, but naturally, Bobby is, like, the exact bass you'd want in an acapella group or a choir. Just, like, a very smooth clean, easy, relaxed tone that's going to blend in perfectly with what he's with what he's singing with, kind of whatever the context is. Um, it's really cool to hear him <clears throat> next to each other in the same range. Uh, hopefully we get to hear Bobby go down a bit because he really gets into this amazing, beautiful part of his register when he gets down to like the low C and his voice kind of like opens up there. Um, so hopefully we'll get that later. Good. The world was fair, the mountains tall in elder days before the fall of mighty kings in Nagathrond and Gondolin, who now be Also, one more comment. So Jonathan, <clears throat> again, if you listen to the interview, he is so efficient with putting out music. That's what has given him, you know, the hundreds of millions, of billions of views probably that he's gotten is he just pumps out great covers. I would not be surprised if he recorded himself on video recording this actual part just to save him one step so he didn't have to lip sync or something. I don't know if that's what happened, but it would not surprise me. The world was fair. 
looks pretty accurate. Days before the fall looks pretty accurate. Kings <laughs> in You can hear it on that D. Bobby's voice really comfortable there. Who now be on the western seas have passed away. And then calm. Just more, he's got more, he's got more space in his pharynx at all times than the other guys do. It is like a cavernous space. That's what gives it that really dark, round uh, color, timbre. Western seas have passed away. The world was fair and Doran's day. A king he was on carven throne in many pillared halls of stone. <laughs> I think he's recording it. I think he's looking at the lyrics over the right and I think he's recording it right now <laughs> I don't know let me, let me watch the let me watch his mouth closely stone I think he's recording it I think he's recording it while we're watching him I really do That was really interesting because we're hearing Colum go kind of above and below that place where he transitions his technique a bit. And you hear for moments the larynx comes up, the space comes down as he ascends into that range, but then comes back down and it like opens back up again. So just pay attention to literally just his vocal color because it tracks perfectly going up and down. And Star and moon, and it goes back down to you. Light of sun and star and moon, and shining lamps of crystal hue, and dimmed by cloud or shade of night, that shone forever fair and bright. Dang, just fat, fat low bees from Column. Like, if you hear that, does that sound real? It does not sound like a real voice, but it actually is. It's crazy. Like, I don't, I don't fault myself for thinking it wasn't real earlier. It still sounds like if you took an audio file and just pitched it down in a program without accounting for what's called the formants to kind of change it how natural it sounds. It just sounds, yeah, fucking wild, man. Every time I hear him do these low notes, I'm like, God damn, crazy. Down to a G1 from Colm? Colm, I've been out to whiskey bars with you, my guy. How much? How much whiskey did it take for you to get down to a G fucking one in pure chest? Smoke, the smoke, God. The hammer on the anvil smoke, the chisel clove and graver row. Their forged was blade and bound was hill. The delver mined the mason. That is a 
tough. That is a tough sound with the three of them. Goddamn. And I don't know how much Colm is playing of the background instruments. Um, I would think some of them he would use a, a, a DAW for a digital digital audio workstation, like he like the program he uses for editing. Because as a composer, I'm sure he has really, really top deck samples of instruments. Um, that's something that all composers have to invest thousands and thousands of dollars in. Um, but I know he does also play some of them. So I'd be interested to hear when we get a chance to talk on my show, which ones he plays and which ones he samples. Call on your ass out, Colin. Call on your ass out. <laughs> start of an alien cadence so we it, the resolution happened but it wasn't as epic but you know i love me an alien cadence maybe there'd be a big one at the very end that would make me very happy so what is an alien cadence usually in a major key so let's say we're an e major even though we're an e minor so alien cadence isn't quite as special in a minor key because this is how the chord structure just goes but Say we're in E major. An alien cadence would be to go to the flat six, which in E major would be C natural. And you do a major chord on C natural instead of what would normally be, actually there wouldn't even be a C chord in an in E major. I'm not gonna get into it. But you'd have E major, and then you'd have C major, and you can already feel it's coming. And then D major. Crap, I fucked it up. This, look at these, look, these tiny keyboard. Here we go. C major. D major. Back to E major. Oh! So epic. So, that's an alien cadence. Oh, that's a D major. But then back to minor. We're Turin's folk. The mountains music walk The harpers harped The minstrels sang And at the gates The trumpets yeah. rang Yeah, so there's that low C and low B for Bobby That I was waiting for, hell yeah I don't know why he's not pictured here I guess just to have a change up or Maybe he forgot to film himself doing this part That's possible these projects come together all over the place, guys. I mean, I think I heard from someone that Bobby filmed the video while he was, like, in Europe doing something and recorded the audio, like, a year ago. The minstrels sang And at the gates the trumpets rang The world is gray, the mountains old, the forges fire Ashen cold, no harp is rung, no hammer falls, the darkness dwells in Durin's hall. This is a beautiful low E there at the end. Jonathan's such a legend that he can collaborate with someone as big as Colum and just be looking at the lyrics while he's doing it. And like he's earned that. Like no one gives a shit because it's Jonathan Young. He's a king. At least I certainly don't give a shit. Sounds amazing. The shadow lies upon his tomb in Moria in Kazadum. Bobby getting some nice vibrato in there. We love it. In Kazadum. Showing a little bit of that. Bobby told me he's actually been thinking about, uh, like Luke Taylor is right now because of where he's studying. Ah, oh, interview with Luke Taylor coming out sometime relatively soon. Um, Bobby also wants to start training a bit of classical just to like build in more of that technique and that foundation, which is great. I would, I would love to see it. Moria in Kazadu, but still the 
sunken stars appear yeah, yeah, you that transition in point. dark and windless mirror hmm. really lightens up into some vibrato at the top just very sweet As an E1 from Bobby for sure. E1 subharmonic from Bobby. That's a very distinct sound. We, I've heard Jonathan go down that low in uh, in his like <laughs> like his false fold uh, foundation, but that was definitely a Bobby sub. There you have it, boys and girls. Uh, what is it? What does Morty say? Gals, blokes, and all all other folks. <laughs> I'll have to tell him I did that on accident. Um, killer. That was so sick. Colin, very cool arrangement, man. God, so much love for you and your singing and your your composition, man, and your instrument playing. Really, unreal, unreal. Uh, come talk to me for an extended period of time. We'd have a great time. We'll drink whiskey and it'll be a blast. Uh, Jonathan Young, you're a fucking legend, man. Absolutely killer. Bobby, you know I love you. Awesome work. Guys, this is super fun. Uh, glad I got to do this. Thanks for all the recommendations to do this. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like. Leave a subscription. Definitely leave a comment. What do you think of these boys? And uh, what else from them should I react to and analyze next? If I'm enhancing your listening experience, please do consider my consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. My God, $1 a month to support me. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.